All right, today we're gonna talk about bone markings. Uh, everybody, um, please keep your mask on. I know this is really a pain, but we need to have them on, please. And All right, um, for bone markings, this is um, places on the bone where you see bumps or ridges or grooves. Um, bones are not very smooth in most places. And that's because muscles, tendons have to attach to the bones. So bone markings are places where you see a bump or a ridge or a groove where things attach to them. There's also places on the bones that are holes or canals that are places for nerves and, and blood vessels to move through. There's two main categories of bone markings. There's projections. Um, the skulls, um, guys can wait. Um, you can take notes to start off and then you'll have time later to fix the skull. And if you need help with the screws, let me know and I can do that for you. Um, but for now, just get the notes down so we can get through this today. Um, so projections grow out of the bone surface. So these are you know, places where you know, it juts out like this right here, your projection right here, um, that round knob right there, that's a projection. So any place that you see it comes out of the bone surface. And then depressions are just the opposite. Um, they're indentations. And these would be hollow areas or depressions that are places where bones fit into. So that's where projections fit into. So an example would be right here. Where you see the femur has a head, which is a projection that goes into this groove right here called the acetabulum, which is on your hip. And that's where the femur articulates with the pelvis that makes up your hip bone. Well, do you see like this right here? I mean, this is basically just jutting out of the bone, right? I mean, this whole thing is a projection. Like it's not just like a straight line like this. So anything that comes out of the bone, like a bump like this or a larger area like this is a projection off the bone. <laughs> have you had these done? So let's go through several bone markings. How do those hurt? Um, just like the, just um, the yeah, this part right here, um, this right here, and, and that, um, and, and also this. These are projections. So there's we talked about the different categories. Um, so we'll talk about projections first. So you should write down these are projections, which is where muscles or ligaments attach. Spell projection. No, it's tuberosity. Oh, tuberosity. Um, T u b e r o s i t y. Can you all not see that? No, I can't. I okay. Basically, all of this you see on this side, um, and it probably would help to to know what what this represents. It's the name of the bone marking on this column, and on this column. It describes what this is. So name on the last description on the yes. okay. So we'll go through several different bone markings. Um, and first start with projections. So tuberosity is one kind of projection. Tuberosity is a large round projection. And it's usually not smooth, it's usually pretty rough. An example you can see right here on the hip bone, the ischial tuberosity, 
and you can see it's just a long rounded area, which is rough as well. Um, tubercle is very similar to a tuberosity. There's not a whole lot of difference between the two when you look at them. They're really both bumps on the bone. Um, tubercle, the description of that is a small rounded projection or process. So basically what, what they say the difference is, is that they say tubercles are small, tuberosities are large, but there are a lot of tuberosities that are about the same size or even smaller than tubercles. So I think that's really, really, really helpful to think of it that way. I would just say that they're both bumps and you're gonna to be told whether it's a tuberosity or tubercle. So you don't need to know the difference between the two. You just need to know that they're both bumps that are on a bone. So you can see on here, one tubercle right here, the adductor tubercle. So there's generally smaller bumps than tuberosities, but tuberosities can also be small bumps like that too. So I just went to tubercle because I just want to tell you how they're similar to tuberosities and they are almost identical to each other. Um, going back up to crest. The crest is a narrow ridge of bone. You can see it along there. Um, it's, you know, all the way across the hip bone, the top, iliac crest. The trochanter, this one is easy because it's only found in one place in the body. So only the femur has a trochanter. The description is that it's very large, blunt, irregularly shaped process. And you can see it along here. This whole thing is a trochanter. It goes along the head of the, the neck of the femur. And then a line is similar to a crest, but the difference is that a line is not as prominent. It's not as raised as the crest. Uh, a crest is usually along an edge, like you can see along the hip bone, it's, it's this edge, where a line is more, not always on the edge. Um, in this picture, you can see a line across here. Epicondyle. This is a raised area that's above a condyle. So epi means on the surface. So if you look for a condyle, you're going to see epicondyle right above it. So basically it's, it's a bump that's above a condyle. So this thing right here, the medial epicondyle would be this whole bump that is right above the condyle, which you can see along here. Yeah. A condyle is a place for articulation. It's a place where bones meet. And so this would articulate with your tibia, your shin bone. So it's just a smooth surface for bones to meet and form a joint. Okay, so, but it is bone, it's not like cartilage or anything? There will be cartilage on it, but the actual condyle we call bone, okay. um, but there'll be cartilage that would be on top of the condyle. Oh. And then a spine is usually a sharp, slender, pointed projection. One spine would be on your vertebrae that comes out. And so it's a pointy area that moves out. <clears throat> then a process is any bony prominence. So it's more of a general term that is for anything on a bone that juts out or points out. So we could call this a process up here. The head of the femur is a process. Uh, these, all these little bumps on here are processes. 
that's a process. So it's, it's a general term for any bump you, or any projection that you see. Another example of a spine, you can see it right here. So it's more pointed than a tubercle. A tubercle is a bump. It's usually rounded, sometimes rough, but a spine is more pointed. Just, um, just to go through a couple of different parts on here, a tubercle up here, another tubercle right here. Um, the head of the humerus, we didn't have to talk about heads and necks yet, so actually let's skip that for now. Um, tuberosity along here, and then condyle is along here where the trochlea is pointing to. Epicondyle, bump along the condyle. Those are only the parts we've talked about so far. Um, for this one, this shows you a spine and a line. We haven't gone through the rest yet, so let's get those for now. Now when we already really went through those ones, so let's get that too. So we talked about projections that are attachments for muscles and ligaments. There's also projections that help to form, form joints. And so there's a few of them that we'll go through for that. And so a head would be an example of a projection that forms joints. So there's a head on the femur right here. There's a head in the rib bone. So you can think of bones as having, you know, a head would just be a larger bulge and then a narrow area would be the, the neck of the bone. And then a facet would be a smooth, nearly flat surface. You can see facets along the ribs here. And so those are places where bones attach to bones or they bones touch bones. And a condyle, we talked about that earlier with, with epicondyles. A condyle would be an area like this. It's a rounded articular projection. It's not quite as flat as the facets would be. Then a ramus is an arm-like projection off of a bone. Look at the ramus on the, the mandible with the skull. It's this area right here. It just comes off the mandible and it forms an arm-like area. Before, before arm like? And then a condyle um, on the jaw, you can see as well right here, and that articulates with the skull. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Oh, to, for attachment sites for muscles and ligaments. So then we're going to look at depressions and openings on bones. And there's two kinds. I mean, one kind would be for um, formation of joints, but another one is for the passage of blood vessels and nerves. So look first at that one. So depressions that are used and openings that are used for blood vessels and nerves to go through, uh, one of them is called a groove. And a groove you can see along the mandible right here. And that's just where nerves and blood vessels travel along through the, uh, the mouth area. And the fissure you can see inside the eye sockets. That's for nerves to go through to the eyes, along with blood vessels. So those are narrow slit-like openings. And the foramen, um, we've gone through that too. Um, those are just holes in the bones. They're small holes for nerves or blood vessels to go through. You can see some on the jaw right here. These two holes right here are foramen, or foramen is plural of foramen. So is that the things on the, uh, the jaw? <laughs> what things? Like you have those two dots right here? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then a notch is an indentation at the edge of a bone. You can see a notch along here. You know, it makes this U shape. Usually notches you can see are either V shapes or U shapes at the ends of bones. And there are other canals and holes that are not for nerves and blood vessels. An example would be a meatus, which you can see in your ear. It's a, it makes your ear canal. So along here, this hole right here, the meatus. And sinuses, um, we talked about those two before, um, they're holes, they're cavities basically. So they're enclosed around bone. So it's a cavity within a bone filled with air in line with mucous membrane. So you have several of them in your skull and that makes the skull lighter and also just helps with voice quality. It gives you a richer voice because if they're, if they're open anyway, if they're closed then your voice quality suffers from that. But if they're filled with air, then your skull is lighter. And there's several along your forehead, behind your eyes, by your nose. Yeah. How are your voice? Your voice sounds different when you're congested. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it also has to do with, you know, if you have a sore throat, then your throat's closing up, and that will also affect it. If your nose is stuffy, that's going to also affect it. Um, but besides those reasons, also, if, you're, if you have um, clogged sinuses, then your voice will definitely not be as rich. Um, as if they're open. <clears throat> and then the fossa, it's a shallow basin-like depression in bone. It's usually for articulation. So usually you're going to have another bone join in that area. So fossa are usually larger areas that are hollowed out or dipped in. I can see right here along the skull, this is a fossa.
throw these down? So let's just review the things that we've learned. Let's see how much you remember. They know what this one is. Here's the T. Trochanter. It's a trochanter. So it's the only one on a femur. Like so, only the femur has a trochanter, and it's along the head of the femur. Um, so sometimes you can see multiple bones with uh, examples of them, but they're all pointing to these bumps. So you have a bump along here. This is the humerus. Other bumps up near the top, the tibia. Tubercle. So, and, and this one is tricky because it could be tubercle or it could be, what's the other one that's like a tubercle? Tuberosity. But that's what this one actually is. Um, there's really no good way to know just by looking at whether it's tubercle tuberosity. You have to just be told that these are tuberosities. And again, you won't have to know the difference between tubercle and tuberosity. Just know that they're both bumps. That's all you need to know about that. And then this one. Is that tubercle? So tubercle. Good. So again, there's not much difference between tuberosity and tubercle. I mean, they look very similar. They're they're both bumps on bones. Um, tuberosity sometimes are more, you know, narrow or they're more broad and longer. The tubercles. Tubercles sometimes are more compact, but not always. And if we just point to the holes that you see through the bone. Begins with an F. Foramen. Foramen, good. And then in plural, foramina. Wait, how do you pronounce foramen? Uh, foramen is singular, foramen. and then for, foramina would be plural. Okay. This one's pointing to this canal by the ear. Begins with an M. Yeah, that's good. This is pointing to this um, groove right here. I'm actually, sorry, I just said it, I didn't mean to, but it's called a groove. So then they're called, I was thinking of sulcus, which is also what you call those things, um, but you might see in your book, so I don't know if your book uses groove or sulcus, uh, but they're both the same thing. What about this one? Sinus, good. Yeah. So there's several um, hollow areas within the skull, and those are the sinuses. This is your nose. This is the area behind your nose. What about these ones? So it's a pointy area on the bone. Spine. So you have a spine. Um, you have several spine that come off your vertebrae. These, each of these, would be a spine. You also have a spine along your shoulder blade. about these ones. These are pointing to the bumps that are above the condyles. Epicondyle. Yeah, so epi means on, and so epicondyles are on the condyles. What about this one? It's going to a ridge that's along the bone. The crest, good. This is pointing to this area right here that's depressed. Fossa. Yeah. How about this area? So these are used for articulation. This is where bones connect other bones. Here's the C condyle. All right, so um, we didn't get through everything, but those are just some of the things to review. We'll do a lot tomorrow that goes through all of the different ones we learned today. I think we already wrote down what bones do a, a lot earlier, didn't we? Do I, do I go through the bone functions? Mm -hmm. I thought we did. Wait, I feel like a different chapter. Different chapter? Well, well this, we did this chapter before break, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It just seems like a different chapter. Yeah. Well, don't worry about writing this down, but 
I do want to go through the difference between male and female skull. So there are several things that you can look for on bones that tell you if it's a male or female. And so um, one big difference would be in the skull. There's other ones too besides that, but we'll go through several points in the skull that are different between male and females. So um, A, what's different between A and for uh, male and female for the A? Yeah, so female is kind of more round, male is broader, it's wider. And then for, and then also you can see right here, males have more of this, this uh, the line is raised more along here than for females. This is more rounded right here. Then what about for B? Yeah, it slopes down a little bit. And then this sharper lines along here. This is more defined. And I also feel like they're just bigger. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, for C? The female's a lot longer and skinnier. Yeah, skinnier. So not, yeah. So you can see this, for the male, it's always, it's usually wider. Um, what else do you see about the cheek area that's different between the two? Pushed in more. Yeah, so this one's um, sharper lines along. So the cheeks are more defined on a man than a woman. And then for the jawline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so females is narrow, more rounded. And you can see along here, um, how is E different from male to female? Yeah, so it's longer for male. Um, you can see along here for F, how is F different in male versus female? Right, so that goes back to like what um, B was pointing to. It's, it's really the same kind of thing that you can see there's a more of a defined line for a male is sharper line. And then for G. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can see right here like that, you can see that these teeth are more like outward, right? And that these teeth are more upright. I mean, it's not a huge difference, but you can see that they're a little bit more upright than these ones are. These ones are a bit further out. You can also you can see around here that this right here, you see right here, this, this um, bump right here is not as defined here as it is here. This one's more outward. You see what, what I mean? And they're not pointing to this one, but you can see right here that this is, a lot more rounded than this one is. This is more, this is smaller and pointier. So a forensic scientist can just look at a skeleton and know pretty much immediately whether it's a male or female, just based on the bone structure, not just of the skull. I mean, if they didn't have the skull, they could still figure this out because the proportions are different, not just for, for the head, but also for the limbs and especially for the pelvic region for, that would be the biggest difference. What if that we go, go to the hip bone, but the bones tell you immediately whether it's a male or female. But the biggest difference you can see is, is the head. We already went through the fractures. Did we, we had about bone marrow before, didn't we? So that's already been discussed. We already went through those. Um, okay, so in your book, let me see what questions you can work on before class ends today. Um, on page 